Today, I'm going to talk about methodology of managed detection and response delivery models for industrial control systems. Gartner called uh, this model MDR, managed detection and response. In the first part of the presentation, I'm going to talk about the subject itself. We uh, used a lot of different uh, terms today, mm, SCADA, ACS, uh, a lot of terminology, but I'd like to uh, talk more about fundamentals. And uh, we're going to talk about uh, SOX. Okay, again about the terms. Uh, one of uh, the terms uh, is called operational technology. It's also a term coined by Gartner. Uh, some people uh, say that this term is quite old, but it becomes very trendy um, right now, especially in the English-speaking countries. We uh, use more often uh, term, uh, the term ACS, Automated uh, Control System. Uh, this uh, term now officially has a definition because uh, it was mentioned in the federal law. That's why now when we use certain terms, we need to know, we need to remember uh, where uh, we take them from. Another thing, uh, we have another definition of the automated uh, systems and automated systems usually it's the set of technical means and uh, means of protecting information and so um, both these definitions they do not include a human although very often we hear that uh, human factor that's something which can create vulnerabilities um, for the system that's just some food for thought Why uh, did I want to talk, uh, talk about MDR today? Uh, there was a similar slide in one of the presentations before me. The uh, speaker was talking about threads for the automated control system. And uh, here I show the history of development of the sector in the last eight years. So, for example, targeted attacks. There were five of them, uh, five types. So. Uh, originally, there were some uh, malware specifically designed for cyber attacks, some uh, malware specifically designed for industrial process disruption, and also malware designed for systems which can guarantee uh, safe um, operations, safe technological processes. Some that's. Um, Again, in English, it's safe, safety instruments and systems, or SIS. And uh, we should keep that in mind. The scope of attacks is not limited with targeted attacks. That's something much wider. Coming back to the topic of targeted attacks, uh, we know about methodology, and uh, uh, there are usually two stages. And it's important if we uh, talk about SOC uh, for ACS. And uh, there are differences this is, uh, um, for two areas, IT um, and OT. And uh, in English-speaking countries, there are a lot of uh, debates about it. But uh, in my view, SOC should be designed for uh, detecting and providing response of attacks at different stages, at all the stages that I mentioned. So, for example, if it's uh, the attack detected at OIT stage, this will be too late. And... Um, uh, very often this was really the case, and uh, it was already too late. So in my view, from the technological and from process point of view, SOC is something which should be targeted at preventing um, kill chain at both stages. And it's also important to know what kind of technologies um, should be included in SOC and what kind of technologies could be used by an engineering company when 
uh, building their protection systems. Unfortunately, um, during conferences or uh, in the internet, we do not hear and see a lot of consolidated information and reviews on comparisons of different products. Last year, Vaidahav Laboratory uh, in the U.S. Uh, prepared a very good comprehensive analysis. And here we see the main types of technologies which were reviewed. They were grouped according to the um, specific, uh, specifics. And uh, this is very good material which you can use uh, when uh, you start uh, deploying a SOC uh, for your clients, for example. What is SOC? SOC is something which uh, works 24-7. Uh, that's, that's a good thing. That's a target that we have to uh, be uh, prepared for that if you really want to provide efficient service. Second thing, that's good expertise. We should be able to um, uh, prevent attacks at two stages, IT and OT. And uh, back end of SOC should have uh, employees who know the specifics of automation systems, people who know how to uh, provide response for different incidents. Next thing, very good processes inside SOC and also good communication processes with the client. I'll tell you um, after my presentation uh, during the coffee break about some specific cases and it's quite difficult to have this efficient communication with the client uh, so that uh, staff can take um, uh, proper decisions on the basis of proposals from a SOC expert. It's very important here to have good analytics data, uh, uh, threat hunting and threat intelligence. That's what we need to have. And we need to have uh, individual plan for incident response. Why do we need to use MDR in ICS? That's good that we have this conference because here we have not only the presentations and talks, but we also have net a lot of networking. But during the conference, we also start discussing some issues um, online. And today, on the basis of the report by Kaspersky Lab about the number of threats, uh, which are their threats to... Uh, ICS, uh, the conclusion was made that there is nothing very, very specific, and um, that's not something extremely uh, dangerous. So that would be wrong to conclude that we need to create uh, protection from basic attacks, but that's not enough. Good SOC should uh, be able to give response to 90% of attacks, but also uh, response to APT attacks, which could be more dangerous than just basic attacks. And MDR model can help here. What do we need to do uh, to get there? I propose discussing several stages. For example, maybe in your infrastructures, it's all different. Maybe at your plants, you are at a more mature stage. But according to my experience, there are several stages. First stage is when infrastructure of the protected object doesn't have information security tools. Second stage, infrastructure has some basic uh, security tools, for example, firewalls or antivirus uh, software. Uh, stage three, infrastructure has specified security tools to protect ICSs. And the fourth stage, um, which um, is something more common for the Western companies, it's when ICS uh, in energy, or oil and gas, in different sectors, all ICSs have comprehensive built-in security, uh, cryptographic or not cryptographic. So this is a stage which we are going to have in the future. Uh, it's not um, everywhere, but it's something where we need to go. 
basic infrastructure. Here we have an example from the energy sector. And this is some typical uh, draft, uh, 220 kilovolt uh, um, a type of station. So such objects, they have typical structure as a rule. And this is typical structure. We usually have two elements, IT uh, element, uh, it can be specific depending on the case, but it usually have uh, email, domain name, network, so typical elements. Luckily, we do not have big uh, differences in this type of systems. Second part, that's something related to automated control systems. It's also typical structure, some number of servers, and all this infrastructure is managed and controlled by Windows OS and not always these operational systems are outdated so they can work properly. How can uh, this be? Uh, so for such type of infrastructure, basic infrastructure, on the right um, Data sources for SOC are all these basic elements, armas, routers, switches, and so on, everything listed on the left. We can um, do the monitoring on the basis of uh, audit of workstations and servers, and here you see some examples of uh, such audits. From time to time, we even see uh, some cases when uh, there are such um, things as listed on this slide. They include uh, security logs, and they can provide data uh, under the standardized protocols. And we can use them for enriching the data uh, about the protected objects. As for the uh, advantages of using basic infrastructure as an object uh, for monitoring, in our view, up to 90% of scenarios for IT infrastructures, they uh, can solve already a lot, a lot of um, standard pro problems. Uh, from the IT kill chain. So as is, we monitor this uh, network and we get result right away. So we can detect um, attacks and what's going on. Um, when attack happens, we can identify suspicious uh, traffic. Uh, we can um, up, upgrade the, pref uh, the privileges and so on. So that's one of the possible examples. Uh, our forecast was based on the analysis of open sources. So, uh, Rindastroy uh, attack um, had such element as uh, kill chain and malware uh, got into the system, backdoor um, was connected to CNS services with Tor, and as a result, uh, we saw some changes in the system uh, which was supposed to be protected. So this first type of activity, that backdoor activity for Tor. When we detect uh, such activity, that's basically uh, uh, the first uh, requirement uh, for SOC, so, uh, and if it's done properly, um, there is a high chance that attack will not um, go to stage two. Uh, so that's the first advantage of, of using such system. Second example, the library of the target uh, system uh, was replaced, um, and uh, that's something that which could easily be detected too. Uh, next, uh, there are several stages. There are different opportunities depending on the the level of uh, technical 
state um, of the network. Uh, here we can use endpoint pro um, protection systems, IDRs, all of them can be uh, also the data sources for SOC. And what are the interim conclusions? The use of the deployment of SOC should cover IT and OT infrastructure. The way uh, we we have it now, it can already now increase the number of detected attacks. So we like living in the world when we do not know what's going on, but it's much better to understand the actual state of the level of protection of the network. So this uh, SOC will help us to detect um, a APT uh, attack at a late at, a, at an early stage and will be able to provide more efficient response. In my view, uh, in the future, I'm now actually talking about raising awareness um, for decision making at uh, I uh, ICS and uh, this will help us to help to to take more efficient and more informed decisions. And this is everything I wanted to share with you. Any questions? We'll be happy to answer right now or after the end of the session. <laughs>